snap. There's the kick. It's gone. Oh my gosh. The kick is gone. Boston Sports Nerd present Joe's Fantasy Field Goal. What's up, nerds and nerdettes? I don't know if we have any chicks that listen to this, but hopefully, I guess. Hopefully, everyone listens to it. Uh, we are back after a long break. Well, week break, but I had to go out. I had some things to do. I was getting married uh, on my honeymoon. I did leave some tips on the uh, BS Nerds Facebook page. I put a little post up there. So hopefully some of you saw that and uh, it helped you this week with your, or this past week that uh, we just had with your waiver wire claims and some streams. You know, I started off really good with the defense streams, and uh, the past two weeks, uh, I have not been great with the picks. Uh, Their their picks, I think, should be good. Obviously, I wouldn't pick them if I knew they were going to suck, but, uh, you know, the NFL is crazy, man. Who would have thought that, you know, the Jets would, would play good? Or the or that the uh, the Texans offense would ex- explode like that. I, I wasn't expecting that. I played the Titans defense and in, in uh, one of my leagues, and that did uh, did not help me. Uh, when you have a team that puts fifty points up on your defense, that's not good. But we're gonna get into this week. I got quarterback streamers for you. I got defensive streamers for you. I got waiver wire wonders. Uh, I got a little start sit for you, so let's just get right into this thing with the quarterback and defensive streamers. Islands in the stream, that is what we are, no one in between, how can we be wrong? Alright, so for, we'll start with the quarterback streamers. This pains me to do, uh... Not the quarterback streamers in general, but this particular quarterback streamer. And it's because I'm going to tell you to play Jameis Winston against the New England Patriots. And as a Patriots fan, that hurts me. But from what I've seen from the Patriots defense, this so far this season, I think you should play every quarterback they play uh, until something tells you otherwise. Um... If you're going to be a Pat, if you're, as a Pats fan, I mean, if you're a fantasy football player, you have to take advantage of teams playing this defense. And so any quarterback that plays this defense from now until they show me something, I'm going to say play that quarterback. So Jameis Winston plays New England this week and you should play him. And, and hopefully I'm wrong. Hopefully, uh, you know, the Pats defense finally shows up and uh, they do something and stop Jameis Winston from scoring. But I think it's a safe fantasy play until you see anything otherwise because uh, two touchdown passes and 300 plus yards is a fucking great fantasy quarterback stream and that's what the Pats have given up to every single quarterback they've faced this year. At least 300 yards and two touchdowns. So, we're going to keep playing quarterbacks against them because why not? Um, my next streamer is Eli Manning. He is going up against the Chargers, who uh, I thought would have a good defense early in the year. I don't know why. Uh, they have good corners. They, I thought they had a good pass rush. Their linebackers are young and pretty good, too. They have a lot of uh, athletic ability and talent on that defense, and they just can't put it together. Uh, it's kind of like the New England defense. They've just been giving up points left and right. And they are playing the Giants, who I know have been struggling on offense. Um, 
But they've looked good. They look good this past game with OBJ back. I know he's a little banged up, but I think he's still going to play. So I am I I feel okay starting Eli Manning against the Chargers. He might throw a pick. He probably will throw a pick. That's just like Eli Manning, but I think he's still a safe stream. Uh, this next one is whoever the starting quarterback is for the Vikings versus Chicago. Chicago is uh, not a very good team, not a very good defense. I've pretty much been telling people to stream who's ever going up against Chicago like all year, uh, unless it's like Big Ben on the road. But uh, we already saw Case Keenum ball the fuck out once, uh, and I've... It's even better if Sam Bradford's there. So, uh, what, whichever quarterback is there versus Chicago, I think they're a safe streaming option. Uh, Marcus Mariota is probably not available. In most Actually, he might be because he's banged up. But if he's healthy, he's playing against Miami. Miami's defense not that great. Yada, yada, yada. whole team's not that great. Um, I'm never... We just saw Tennessee get fucking torched by Houston. They Houston put up 50-something points. Uh, against Tennessee. I will never recommend Jay Cutler be a streaming quarterback for you guys until Jay Cutler fucking does something. Because I think two weeks in a row, he had fucking perfect matchups to go out there and 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 put up some points, and both times he fucking shit the bed bad. So... I am not going to tell you guys to to uh to stream Jay Cutler anymore until I see something from him. Uh so I if Marcus Mariota is healthy, if he's playing, it seems like it's going to be a game time decision and he's on your waiver wire. I do like him against Miami this week. Uh this is probably outside of Jameis versus New England, which I I actually don't like I'm not a fan of because I'm a New England fan and I don't want to play Jameis Winston against New England. Uh Outside of that, my favorite streamer this week is probably the man who seems to be able to get it done with what I think is the worst team in football, probably outside Indy, and that is Josh McCown and the New York Jets going to Cleveland. Uh, Every team is pretty much beat up on Cleveland so far this year, and Josh McCown has already won two games with a very, very bad roster, especially on the offensive side of the ball. So I really like Josh McCown versus at Cleveland this this week. Um, I think he'll be a very good streamer. He's probably my favorite on the list so far, just because I like the matchup. Um, if you want to take a chance, you might be able to play Kaiser versus the Jets, but I, I actually wrote that down and then crossed it off because I don't know. I I got to see something from Kaiser too. He he's put up good weeks, but they seem to be like garbage time weeks, which I guess don't matter. It doesn't matter in fantasy when your points come, as long as your points come. But um, he's really up and down, and he's really hard to predict what he's going to do. So I think there are better streaming options, which is why I crossed Kaiser off. Um, but I guess if you're really in a bind, you could play Kaiser and hope for one of those big games. Because when he goes off, he has a pretty nice game. Um but when he's bad, he's really bad. So, like, three points bad. Like, crap your team bad. Uh, my last two streamers, I know this is way more than three. Uh, I, I, I've I kind of, you know, fucked off on the three quarterbacks and three defenses rule because why not just give you all of them that I think are going to have good games and then, you know, you pick the one that you agree with me on. And the, the last two quarterbacks I have are both quarterbacks in the... Indianapolis Colts and San Francisco 49ers matchup. So I have uh, Briss, Jacoby Brissett and Brian Hoyer both as uh, good streaming options this week. Uh, I know Brissett looked really good against the Browns, and San Francisco's defense is not that much better. Uh, I know he looked shitty against Seattle, but that's Seattle. And, I mean, let's be realistic here. But I think he'll be okay against uh, the 49ers. And his legs, uh, his running ability really is great for fantasy football. It's easy points. So I really like Brissett versus San Francisco. And on the other side, Indy's defense is fucking trash. And, you know, we saw Brian Hoyer light it up against the Rams, who have a much better defense than Indy does. So, I mean, 
San Francisco has been pretty shitty on offense uh, for most of the year, but I think they they can take advantage of bad defenses and uh, really get the job done uh, for you know a weekly streaming option. So I like Hoyer versus Indy, and that's it for the quarterback streamers. For the defensive streamers, I was a little shocked by something I saw. So I was on um, ESPN Fantasy Sports doing some research for this episode for my defensive streams. And the number one defense, fantasy defense in the NFL is only owned in 34.4% of all fantasy leagues. Um, And that is the Detroit Lions. And they have a matchup that I think is juicy against the Carolina Panthers. I know some of you are like, Carolina Panthers, they just put 30 points up on the Pats. Listen, the Pats defense is fucking wretched. Stop thinking about the Patriots defense as like your typical Patriots defense. Think of it as like last year's Saints defense. That's what the Carolina Panthers just did. They put up 30 points on last year's Saints defense because that's what the Patriots have this year. Um, Detroit, on the other hand, has been turnover central. Uh... They've been making everyone turn the ball over. I think they lead the league in interceptions as a team. And Cam Newton, as great as he was on Sunday, has been awful for the rest of the year. And I don't think one out... I think that's an outlier game. What you saw in New England is a really bad defense that doesn't know what the fuck they're doing. And Cam Newton capitalizing on it. And I don't think you are going to have that when he plays Detroit. And I think that game is in Detroit, actually. So you have the number one ranked fantasy defense available. Um, he's o- it's only owned in 34.4% of leagues. So go out there and get the Detroit Lions defense if they're out there. Get yourself the number one ranked fantasy defense in the NFL this year. Um, some other defenses I like. I like the Rams versus Seattle. Seattle's def- uh, offense... Um, has looked pretty awful all year. They just lost who I think is their best running back in Alex Collins. Uh, their offensive line is fucking terrible. And the defensive line for the Rams ha- has been a nightmare for everyone, it seems like. So, I really like the Rams versus Seattle. I know Seattle has put up... They like just put up points last night against... Uh, who did they play last night? Indy? Um, but... Uh, that's not important. <laughs> that's indie. So I I do like the Rams this week for Seattle. I think they can get it done. Um, the Eagles versus Arizona. Arizona has not looked great on offense. Um, and the Eagles have looked like a fucking really good team. Actually, I've been pleasantly surprised by the Eagles uh, this year. I think I honestly think if I'm making a prediction that the Eagles are going to win the NFC East this year, like. I would not be shocked by this at all. I th- I honestly think they're the best team in the NFC East. I think they're better than Dallas. I think they are better than New York, obviously. Uh, I I think they're better than the Redskins. I th- I think you might see the the Eagles and the Redskins duke it out for who's the best um, in the NFC East this year. Dallas just has not seemed the same. They just lost to the Rams. I don't know. I just. Dallas has not seemed as nearly as dominant as they seemed last year. So uh, I really like the Eagles versus Arizona. Carson Palmer has been turning the ball over. Their offense just, while they, they do move the ball, it's just not really that explosive. So I think you have a safe floor. And with some turnover potential, I like that defense. You got Minnesota versus Chicago. It's also going to be Mitch Trubisky's debut. So uh, that could go one of two ways. He could be the second coming of Jesus and just ball the fuck out. But Minnesota has a pretty good defense. And uh, I don't really expect that to happen, especially with a a rookie QB making his first start. This isn't preseason football anymore. Um, I really like that matchup. Uh, Minnesota versus Chicago. I think that's in Minnesota. So to add to that. And the last one is the Giants versus the Chargers. Listen, coming into the year, 
all we heard about is how great the Giants' defense was going to be. The Giants' defense has been trash. And I know they're missing pieces. I know Janoris Jenkins is banged up, which is a huge, huge deal. Like, that's their guy. Uh, that All that being said, I'm picking them as a defensive streamer because they're playing the Chargers. And I think... Uh, that's a good matchup for them because Philip Rivers is a fucking turnover fiend. And, uh, that's good for fantasy. Uh, so that's why I like that matchup. So, uh, Giants versus Chargers. I'm expecting, you know, multiple picks, maybe a fumble. The Chargers have just not been able to get it together, man. So I like, uh, the Giants versus the Chargers uh, as a defense. And with that, we will move on to the Waiver Wire Wonders. And I wonder if you know the wonder of it all. All right, let's get into the Waiver Wire Wonders and shoot through this list here. The first on the list I have is Alex Collins. This is your new starting running back in Baltimore. It's really, uh, the Baltimore Ravens offense is A, awful, um, but they are committed, they, they like to run, and they have, they found this guy, Alex Collins, I think he's a cast off from the, from the Seahawks, uh, he is a three down back, he can catch the ball, he, he's, he's gonna be the new starter on Baltimore, so, Um, I really like Alex Collins as a pickup this week. For some reason, Baltimore fucking hates Buck Allen. I don't know what it is. I don't, I don't know why. He looked really good, uh, you know, in like week two, right after, uh, Danny Woodhead went down. It, it looked like Buck Allen was gonna be the back to take over there. And then they just stopped giving him the ball. I don't know what it is. I don't know why they don't like Buck Allen. It reminds me of the the Mark Ingram thing in New Orleans. Like, they just seem to not like him. Uh, so, it looks like Alex Collins is going to be the guy there. I'm not really worried about uh, Buck Allen taking the job, because I just don't think they like him. And I think Alex Collins played good in his debut. I think he had, like, 14 rushes or something like that. How many rushes did he have? He had a good amount of touches for, like, 96 yards. Or something like that. So I like Alex Collins as a pickup this week. Uh, Next on the list is Tyler Croft, the tight end for the Cincinnati Bengals. This is uh, with the caveat that um, Tyler Eifert is still hurt. And as long as Tyler Eifert is hurt, I think uh, Tyler Croft is a safe play. Andy Dalton likes to use his tight end. He likes to use his tight end in the red zone. He'll target him often. And if you need a deep play at tight end... Uh, I really like the backup there in Cincinnati with Tyler Eifert out, and that is Tyler Croft. Next on the list is Alvin Kamara. Now, I have Alvin Kamara in a lot of leagues. I drafted him. I was kind of surprised to see that he's only owned in like 25% of uh, ESPN leagues. Um, He's the pass catching back for the New Orleans Saints. He already has 20 receptions this year, which is like, I think two receptions less than Stefan Diggs. Uh, he's like right up there with some of the top receivers and how many receptions he's getting. He he just had a 10 reception game this week against Miami. Uh, I really like... Did they play Miami this week? Whatever. Whoever he just played, he had a 10 reception game against. I think it was Miami. Um, the pass catching back for Drew Brees offense, like literally always has 40 yard, 40 receptions a year. So if he's going to get some running work, he had a rushing touchdown the game before, uh, if he's going to get some running work and some, and he's going to get 40 receptions, which I think he will, he's already got 20. So 40 is not a stretch at all. Uh, then I think he's definitely worth a pickup. And he's available in like 75% of leagues. So keep an eye on Alvin Kamara. Next on the list, I actually have a pair of Texans receivers. I like both of them 
Um, Will Fuller is probably uh, is probably going to be the more highly sought after one, but I like both Will Fu- Will Fuller and Bruce Ellington. Uh, Will Fuller is a big time. Think Deshaun Jackson, straight boomer bust, uh, big play guy. Um, it didn't look like that in his stat line. He had two touchdowns. I think he only had like, I don't know, 40 yards or something like that receiving. Uh, but he is the big play guy in the Texans. Bruce Ellington is their slot guy, and he's been targeted about five or six times a game uh, since he came back from injury two weeks ago, I think. Um, I like them both, and I think that offense is on the rise, actually. So, you know, I would pick one or the other. I think the safer pick is probably Will Fuller at this point, just because he has more touchdown potential than Bruce Ellington. Um, But I I like both of them, so keep both those guys in mind. Uh, Next up, we have Jerron Brown from the Arizona Cardinals. He He should be rostered, I think, to be honest with you. Um, as long as John Brown is out, Jerron Brown is worth having. Uh, Carson Palmer likes to throw to him. They have a good rapport. He seems like the number one receiver over there. Um, I like Jerron Brown. I'm not going to talk a ton about it. I mean, oh, he's not the number one receiver. It's Larry Fitzgerald. But uh, he is the number two now that John Brown is, is banged up. And John Brown could be coming back this week. Um, but... He's always banged up, John Brown. So just keep an eye on John Brown this year. Uh, my next guy, shouts out to Chad Dizzle Davis from Pass the F and Popcorn. He uh, hit me up on my Facebook post last week on my um, on my uh, tips, my my streamers and my waiver wire wonders. I posted while I was on my honeymoon, I made a big time error and I left Wendell Smallwood off of the list. Uh, so I th- I thought I would make up for it now. He's still not owned in very many leagues. So just check your waiver wire. If you haven't picked up Wendell Smallwood, uh, go pick him up. He is going to touch the ball, I think, more than any other running back in that backfield from now until the end of the year. Uh He's going to be the main – I think he's, he's going to split carries with Blunt, but he's going to get the passing work too. So he's going to be on the field a lot more than Blunt is. So I really like Wendell Smallwood from Philly, and uh, he should have been on last week's. Um, I was – you know, I, I missed him. So make sure you go get him uh, this week because he had another good – he had a good week this week. So he's going to be highly sought after. So if you probably you might have to pay more if you're in like a auction league, um, or hopefully you didn't use your waiver priority and uh, scoop up Wendell Smallwood uh, this week. Next on the list, this is your last warning on Charles Clay. Your last warning. I checked it. He's owned in fifty point six percent of leagues. I think he's like the number five tight end on the year this year. He is a stud. I've been telling you guys this all season, all preseason. Keep an eye on Charles Clay. Well, it's it's this is your last chance. Stop keeping an eye on him and go grab him. He's available in 50% of leagues. Go check if you're one of them and grab him. He's a top five tight end. Unless you have Gronk or Zach Ertz. Or, fuck, I don't even know who the top tight ends are this year. Unless you have Gronk or Zach Ertz, really, uh, Charles Clay is worth rostering. He gets the targets. He should be on your roster. So this is your last warning. I'm not going to bring him up in waiver wire wonders anymore because he's going to he's gonna ball the fuck out again, and he's going to be owned in more than 50% of leagues. He's right on the line right now. Go get Charles Clay. Um... Next on the list, I'll do another tight end, actually, and that's Evan Ingram. Evan Ingram is the number nine tight end. He's a top ten tight end. And the big thing that Charles Clay and Evan Ingram and Rob Gronkowski and uh, Zach Ertz all have in common is they get steady targets. They consistently get five to six to seven 
plus targets a game. And that's what we're looking for in a tight end fucking shit show that we've had so far this year are guys that are consistently getting targeted. Sometimes they get targeted a lot and they don't have a touchdown. They have like 50 yards. But pay attention to the targets. Evan Ingram is constantly getting targets. Eli Manning likes him. He's getting consistently five, six, seven targets a game, sometimes more. I really like Evan Ingram. He should be owned, and he's not rostered in nearly enough leagues, definitely below 50%. Um, Next on the list is Cooper Cup. Uh, I think Cooper Cup is worth a roster spot in a in a in a in a deep ish league. He's he's going to be hard to predict start sit, but he seems to have favor in that offense. And I think the 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 one like game where they blew the fuck up, they scored a, a bunch of points, and he wasn't involved is kind of an outlier. And I think he's he's definitely worth rostering. He's taken in most of my leagues. Um, but he's available in well below 50, uh, well above 50% of leagues. So go get Cooper Cup. He's definitely worth rostering. I, I wouldn't even say in a deepish league. He's worth rostering if your wide receiver core is, is not super strong. Um, next up is Latavius Murray. Uh, Dalvin Cook's done. I, I know, I don't think the MRI has come out. Maybe it has at this point that he's, um, He's done for the year, but he's done for the year. He's Oh, no, it did come out. He has almost a completely torn ACL. Yeah, he's done. Uh, Latavius Murray's going to take over that backfield. He'll, he'll, take down the, he'll take over the first and second down carries, and then Jarek McKinnon will probably be your pass catcher. But uh, go pick up Latavius Murray because he was a productive back in Oakland. Not the best back, but uh, definitely around the goal line and stuff like that. And uh, he needs to be rostered. On a side note, though, what a fucking bummer about Dalvin Cook, man. He was having such a good year. He looked like a complete stud. Uh, In my main league that I'm in, I have Devonta Freeman and Dalvin Cook. And I was like, I am so set at running back with those two. They have just been, it's like the number three and the number four running back in the NFL and then Dalvin Cook fucking blows his knee out. Non-contact knee injury. Right when I saw that. Right when that headline came up on my phone. That was just such a downer. Uh, a side note there. Sorry about that. And the last on my list is the Seattle backfield. Everyone hopped on the Chris Carson hype train. And he's gone. Broke. I think it's a broken ankle. Uh, he's done for a while, if not the whole season. So, take your pick, I guess. I like CJ Proceis the most out of, uh, who's back there. Uh, just because I don't think Eddie Lacy or Thomas Rawls have played very well. CJ Proceis has just been banged up. But he's definitely going to have the third down roll locked down. But, go pick up a Seattle running back. If you if you need one, I just the hardest thing right now is for me to try and predict who the who the Seattle running back you should get is. But if CJ Proceis is back, I would I would suggest you pick up CJ Proceis. That's just my opinion. Um, but if you have a throwaway spot, pick one of them and roster them because you never know if Thomas Rawls takes the job, then you have a starting running back. And starting running backs are hard to come by um, in fantasy football as the weeks go on. That's it for the waiver wire wonders. Let's go through the games next week with start sit. I'm ready to go in, coach. Just give me a chance. I know there's a lot riding on it, but it's all psychological. I've just got to stay in a positive frame of mind. How much you want to make a bet? I can throw a football over the mountains. Yeah, well, coach would have put me in fourth quarter. We'd have been state champions, no doubt. All right, let's go with start sit. So, just a heads up here. Atlanta, Denver, New Orleans, and Washington are on by. Atlanta, Denver, New Orleans, Washington, all on by this week. So, obviously, you know, fill in accordingly if you have any of the people on on those teams there. 
Uh, let's get into the Week 5 schedule now. So the first game is Pats Buccaneers. And I'm playing everyone on both sides of the ball. Um, playing whatever Pats receivers you have. Gronk, Brady. Gillisley has been really tough to play. He's not getting enough yards to be a sustainable running back consistently. Um, but he is... Always a risk for touchdowns and multi -touch multiple touchdown game. Um, I think this will be a high-scoring affair. Gillisley's definitely f worth a flex. If you need him to be your number two, he's definitely worth a number two. Um, I, I, I'm playing everyone. I'm playing Mike Evans. I'm playing... Oh, this is Doug Martin alert. Doug Martin alert. This is Doug Martin is back. He's back against the Patriots, uh, who have not been good on defense. So uh, play Doug Martin if you have him. Um, he's definitely going to be the starting running back. I don't think he's going to. I don't think there's going to be a grace period where you know him and Jaquiz split carries. I think it's going to go 100% to Doug Martin. Um, so play Doug Martin. Play, you know, Mike Evans. Play. Deshaun Jackson play Jameis Winston. Maybe t play one of the. Maybe play Cameron Bray. If you uh, if you're really desperate at tight end and you didn't listen to me about uh Charles Clay, play everyone in this game. Um, next on the list is 49ers Colts, and I kind of feel the same way about this game. I know this is you know. Shit football. This is two really bad teams playing against each other. But uh, they're both really bad defenses. And for that, I think the offenses can have a good game. So I'm playing um, Brian Hoyer or Jacoby Brissett if I need a streamer. I'm playing T.Y. Hilton. I'm playing Frank Gore because the 49ers are terrible uh, at stopping the run. Um, on the 49ers side, I'm playing Hoyer, if you need a streamer. I'm playing Pierre Garçon. I'm playing Carlos Hyde. Uh, and that's probably it. Those are us those are really the, the only rostered guys on either teams. Uh, maybe Dante Moncrief if he's healthy. But that's who I'm probably playing in that game. Uh, next on the list is Jaguars and Steelers. Um, I'm playing... Is this in Pittsburgh? Yeah. I'm playing... I don't know. I'm playing the Jags. Uh, definitely playing Leonard Fournette. You could probably stream Blake Bortles, but I, I have other matchups I like more. Uh, I think you'd be safe flexing either receiver. For the Steelers, I'm not playing the tight end for the Jaguars. Um, for the Steelers, obviously you play Lev Bell and Antonio Brown. Do you want to play Big Ben this week? It's Big Ben at home. Yeah, play Big Ben if you have him. Um, Antonio Brown, Lev Bell, Big Ben. I don't know about Martavis Bryant, man. I'm probably sitting Martavis Bryant until I see something from him. Because I just don't, I haven't seen what I thought we were going to see from Martavis Bryant yet. I'm really honestly only probably playing ben, Big Ben, Lev Bell, and Antonio Brown on the Steelers. Uh, next on the list is Bills Bengals. <sighs> Sorry about that. Bills Bengals. Um, I'm playing Tyrod Taylor. I'm playing Shady McCoy. I'm playing Charles Clay. And who the fuck knows about, with their wideouts, but I'm playing those three. Tyrod Taylor, Shady McCoy... And 
Charles Clay. If you have them, uh, any of those guys on your team, they're probably worth a start this week. For the Bengals, the Bills have been like a sneaky good defense, but they haven't played anyone, so they're kind of unproven. And the Bengals have like looked really good since that offensive coordinator change. So I'm probably playing Andy Dalton. I'm definitely playing Andy Dalton. Um, AJ Green, obviously. Uh, whoever is the tight end over there this week, Tyler Croft or Tyler Eifert, I'll probably play them because tight end has been a crapshoot, so I think that's a safe play. And that's probably it, to be honest with you. Uh, I don't even know who to play in the backfield for the Bengals. Maybe you could flex Joe Mixon, but I don't know. The, the Bills' defense has been sneaky good. I'm probably only playing those three guys. Next on the list is Titans-Dolphins. If Mariota plays, I'm playing my Titans. If Matt Castle plays, I'd be a little bit more hesitant, but I'm playing DeMarco Murray regardless. I know he hasn't been great this year outside of that one game, but I think they're going to be up against the Dolphins, and I think that they will lean on the run, especially if uh, Mariota is out. As far as the Dolphins go, obviously you're playing Jay Ajayi. You spent a high pick on him. He's supposed to be a running back one. He hasn't he hasn't played that great. Um, you're playing Ajayi. You're playing um, both receivers. whose names I'm blanking on right now. Not Kenny Stills. The other two assholes. Jarvis Landry and... Devontae Parker. You're playing both of them. I'm not going to tell you to play Jay Cutler. I refuse to tell you to play Jay Cutler. He's a piece of shit. He will always be a piece of shit. And I'm not going to tell you to play him. So don't play Jay Cutler. Play someone else. Um, can you tell he scored me t- two, two games in a row? Next on the list is the Jets and the Browns. Um, I'm playing Duke Johnson Jr. for the Browns. And I'm playing probably Kenny Britt is a flex-worthy option. Duke Johnson Jr. is really a flex-worthy option. Um, Sean Kaiser, if you're really in a pinch, I guess, at quarterback. The Jets, I'm playing Bilal Powell. Josh McCown, is I really like as a streamer this week. Um, With that being said, I think both receivers there, Robbie Anderson and uh, the other guy, not Paul Richardson, Um, the other dude who came from Seattle who now plays for the Jets at wide receiver, uh, whose name I also can't remember. What the fuck is wrong with me today? They're both worth playing. You know who I'm talking about. I'm not even going to look it up. Uh, They're both worth playing. So, um, McCown, Bilal Powell, and both receivers for the Jets. Robbie Anderson and the Seattle guy that's on the Jets now. Um, Next game is Chargers-Giants. You're playing Keenan Allen. You're playing Melvin Gordon. You're playing... I'm probably streaming a better option option than Philip Rivers this week, especially if Janoris Jenkins is healthy. Um, you could probably flex Tyrell Williams. Uh, for the Giants, I'm playing. I'm playing my Giants. Hopefully, you don't have any Giants running backs. Uh, but I, I I like Eli as a stream. Obviously, you play OBJ. 
uh, play Sterling Shepard, play Evan Ingram. Brandon Marshall might be flex worthy if you're in a pinch. Next on the list is Panthers Lions. Lions, the number one fantasy defense in the NFL this year. Um, I'm playing all of my Lions. Whichever receivers you have. Uh, Amir Abdullah, if he's healthy, he's got a questionable tag on him right now. Or Theo Riddick, if, if Amir Abdullah is not healthy. Um, Matt Stafford, obviously. I like. I like Matt Stafford. Uh, for the Panthers, I really think you're going to see a, a regression for the Panthers. Um, you're playing Christian McCaffrey, though. You should always play Christian McCaffrey. Um, Jonathan Stewart might be worth a flex. Kelvin Benjamin is worth playing. Maybe. I don't like them. I I have a, I honestly I have a bad feeling about this pe- matchup for the Panthers. That's me taking the pa- Patriots game as an outlier, though. If they really have stepped up and their offense has taken that step, then you should play all your Panthers if that's what you think. But I just don't like the matchup, and I don't think the Panthers are as good as the Patriots made them look uh, on Sunday. So I guess you could stream Cam Newton. He's going to be owned in a lot of leagues after last week. A lot of people are going to buy in. Um, I'm definitely playing McCaffrey. I'll probably play Kelvin Benjamin. Um, I, I I would probably stay away from Devin Funches, and you might be able to flex Jonathan Stewart. Uh, last of the 1 o'clock games is Cardinals-Eagles. Um, I'm playing all of my Eagles. You play Zach Ertz. You play Wendell Smallwood. If you don't have him, go pick him up. Uh, you might be able to flex Blunt if you need to. I would probably look for a better matchup if you can. I just don't know how many touches Blunt's going to get. He did have a big play, so, you know, touchdown, upside. He's probably definitely worth a flex. Uh, play Alshon Jeffrey has been a stud this, this year. Zach Ertz is 100% play every week, no matter what. He's as locked in at tight end as Gronk is at this point. Um, That's probably it for the Eagles. For the Cardinals, who the fuck do you play on the Cardinals? You play Larry Fitz every week. I like better people. I like other people over Carson Palmer as a stream, so I probably wouldn't play Carson Palmer. Jerron Brown, if John Brown's not there, I would play Jerron Brown. Uh, I really like Andre Ellington, who you know, sneaky callback to waiver wire wonders. Uh, he wasn't on the list, but. Um, you could add him if if you need help at running back. He looks like he's going to catch fucking 10 balls out of the backfield every week on a team that can't run. So think of him as like the Cardinals Theo Riddick of last year. Uh, probably Ellington as a flex, Jerron Brown, and Fitzgerald on the Cardinals. I, that offense has just not been impressive. Ravens Raiders, there's no Derek Carr. That hurts everybody. That hurts Marshawn Lynch. That hurts Amari Cooper. That hurts uh, Michael Crabtree, who's out too. Uh, I don't know if I'm playing any Raiders. I would, I would try and. I would stay away from the Raiders. For the Ravens, the offense has been wretched. Like, historically, historically bad. Um, I would play the running back, Alex Collins. 
and maybe Ben Watson if you're uh, really fucked up at tight end and he's healthy. Don't fucking play Jeremy Macklin. Piece of shit. I played him in my league. Didn't do shit. I left Amir Abdullah and Alvin Kamara on the bench. Played Jeremy Macklin and got three points. Um, honestly, out of that, both teams in the Ravens Raiders game, I might only play the, the running back for the Ravens, Alex Collins, and and Ben Watson if you really need a tight end. Uh, next on the list is Seahawks Rams. It's the other 405 game. I'm playing my Seahawks. Um. I'm staying away from the Seahawks' backfield. I know I told you guys to pick them up, but that was kind of like a, hey, if you have a spot on your bench, you could potentially get a starter. For this first game back, definitely do not start a Seahawks running back because you don't even know who's going to get the ball. Um, You play Russell Wilson, obviously. You play Jimmy Graham. Uh, I don't know if Doug Baldwin's even healthy, but if he is, you play Doug Baldwin. Um, for the Rams, it's just still the Seahawks defense. You're obviously playing Todd Gurley. You should never not play Todd Gurley. Don't let this Seahawks matchup fuck you up. I don't like Jared Goff this week, obviously, as a streamer. I'm probably just playing Todd Gurley. Maybe a flex on Sammy Watkins, but he's going to be matched with Richard Sermon. I would not do that, actually. Todd Gurley and uh, a few Seahawks. Russell Wilson, Doug Baldwin, Jimmy Graham. Uh, that's going to be a low-scoring game. I don't know what Vegas has for it. That would, I would be curious to see. But that is that – is, it's in L.A., I think. That is not going to be a high-scoring game. I know the Rams have had a really good offense so far, but I just don't i don't see that being very high-scoring. Could be wrong. In which case, you probably didn't start any of the Rams that are going to score points. Uh, the 425 game is Packers-Cowboys. I'm probably playing everyone in this game. Both defenses are kind of meh. Both offenses can be really good, which is like the fucking perfect matchup. Obviously, you're playing Rodgers. You're playing whatever f- healthy Packers receivers you got. Um, hopefully, Ty Montgomery is back. I would really like that. <laughs> uh, and you can play him. If Ty Montgomery's not back, uh, you know, pay attention to who's going to be starting for the Packers. That could be a sneaky ad at the last second to play um, as a running back. But hopefully Tom Montgomery's back. And uh, you could play maybe Marty Bennett. If you need to start at tight end. Rodgers and whatever other pass catchers you have for the Packers. For the Cowboys. You play Dez. What the fuck is up with Bryce Butler? He should probably be in the waiver wire wonders two weeks now. He's got a touchdown. He's probably worth a deep bench spot, especially if you need wide receiver help. Uh, probably playing Dez. I still don't have confidence to start Bryce Butler. Definitely playing Zeke. Definitely playing Dak. And you could play Witten. And that's probably it. Um, and for the Chiefs Texans, which is the eight thirty game, I'm playing all of my Chiefs. <laughs> they've they've looked fucking really good so far. I don't know why they would slow down. Um, the Chiefs Redskins game is on right now. I think uh, I haven't checked the score or if the Chiefs are doing anything. But I, I'm probably playing all of my Chiefs. Uh, and by all of my Chiefs, I mean the same Chiefs you play every week, and that is Alex Smith, Travis Kelsey, Tyreek Hill, and Kareem Hunt. And oh, you only play Alex Smith if you need to play a quarterback. 
Uh, the Texans. The Texans. Do I buy? You're definitely playing New Hopkins, DeAndre Hopkins. Um, you're definitely playing Lamar Miller. He just had a really good week. And I really like uh actually I would play all the receivers. I would I would they're all DeAndre Hopkins is a must start. The other two, uh Bruce Ellington and um Will Fuller, I think could be deep flex options. Although the Chiefs defense is pretty good, I just I think they could be. Deep flex options. Like if you definitely need a f like a if you're struggling at the flex, I think you'd be okay starting Ellington or Will Fuller. And you definitely start Nuke or DeAndre Hopkins, and you definitely start Lamar Miller. Um, and you could probably not play Watson this week. If you, if he has another week like this, at the, if he has another week like the week he just had against the Titans, and then the week before he had against the Pats, you should play him every week until otherwise. You know, stay in the flames. So, on to the last matchup. The Monday matchup is the Vikings at the Bears. The debut of young Mitch Trubisky. Um, I don't like uh, a lot of Bears in this in this uh, matchup just because I don't know what Mitch is going to do. So it's really hard to predict uh, what I what you guys should do. Um, you're gonna play Tariq Cohen. You're gonna play Jordan Howard, and then I would probably stay away from everything else on the Bears until we know until we get some tape with Trubisky. For the Vikings, I am playing. Latavius Murray if I need a running back. And I'm going to keep playing Diggs and Thielen uh, every week until I have a reason not to. I think the Vikings are perfectly fine with Case Keenum or Sam Bradford, especially with a weak Bears matchup. Uh, so I'm playing Diggs and Thielen and... Uh, Latavius Murray, maybe Kyle Rudolph, but he's just not been that good. Um, but that's it. That's it for, that's the last matchup. Um, I'm glad I'm back. Uh, I hope you guys are doing a little bit better than I am in my fantasy leagues. I think I'm two and two in just about every one, all six. Granted, I drafted a pretty similar team in all of them. You know, different pieces here and there, but uh, two and two is not bad four weeks through. Obviously, I'd like to be undefeated, but I'm not 0-4 in any of them. So, I will see you guys next week, and, uh, you know, ball on. Oh,